Hello and welcome back to the Oxbridge Formula. Today we're here with Jamie who is a Balliol student at Oxford. Would you like to tell me a little bit more about yourself? Yeah, so yeah, my name's Jamie as you said. Um, I've just finished my third year studying maths and stats at Balliol College uh, at Oxford, yeah. Cool, so why did you pick Balliol? Um, so I think I made my decision when I went on an open day, um, more than anything. I, I turned up with a short list of colleges that appealed to me um, which is probably a good idea actually because you definitely can't fit them all in one day um, and I looked around them all and you know a lot of them were very nice like there were all these massive huge pretty buildings and everyone was really friendly when I was going around so it was quite hard at the time to make a distinction between which college was perfect for me um, but I think when I went to Balliol there was this moment where there was this room that I walked in and there was just like maybe 10 students that are from Balliol that you were just able to talk to about anything you wanted to and I bumped into a math student there. And then we just got talking for like 10, 15 minutes and he was so, so lovely. Um, and he w I was really like, oh, I really feel like I could fit in here. Like everyone was so nice. And then all of his mates were like chipping in with all the comments and helping me out, giving me advice. Um, and I just felt you know, really welcome there. And that's why, that more than anything is why I chose Balio. Yeah, um, I think like a welcome environment is so important and open days are really like a great way to sort of test the waters in that way. Yeah, completely. Like there were other things that like made it make the shortlist as well. Um, so it wasn't entirely because people were nice to me, um, but I think that's the thing that clenched it for me. What else did you look at then? What else sort of like helped with your deciding in which college to pick? Um, so I think a big factor with me is that I wanted it to be quite central. Um, and Balliol is really central, like it <laughs> yeah. almost defines the centre of Oxford. Um, so that's really nice. Um, yeah, it's, and it's like right next to Tesco as well, which is the other like really important thing you find at Bailey. It's one of its most redeeming factors. <laughs> um, yeah, so set, being in the centre was quite important to me. At the time, Bailey, um, at least what, from what I read online, had this like left-wing liberal reputation, which appealed to me when I was applying. Um, I'm not sure where that stands at the moment, now that we have Boris Johnson in, in office, but... Um, yeah, at the time, that was something that appealed quite a lot to me. And it's something that rings, um, you know, slightly true. Um, and then uh, there was also some quite good tutors at Balliol that, you know, I'd heard of before. Um, you know, I'd maybe seen at different maths events I'd been to. So it, that put me at ease as well. And just have some, like, friendly faces that I'd seen, you know, do maths online and stuff before. That's really nice. And it looks like you really did look like have a broad overview of things that you found important and you picked a college that sort of ticked all those boxes. Um, yeah, I I did. Really, yeah. Yeah. And thankfully, like it did live up to the things I wanted. That's well. good. That's good to know as well, because sometimes like it seems perfect on paper, but in reality, it's not. Um, so, so that's really good. And I know that Bailey is like a really popular college in the open days because um, I helped to the open days last summer and we got like I think we got 3,000 people coming into college and we were so happy about it. And then we heard rumours that Bailey had, had like 12,000 in and we were like, oh yeah, no. <laughs> awesome I think the main, the main selling point on the open days is the Bailey of bags. We always have some bags, which we started according to our access officer. We were the first ones to do bags. Um, and that enticed a lot of visitors because you, you see everyone walking around on the open days with these Bailey bags and then it's such a power move because they go to the other colleges and get their perspectives and put it in the Bailey or bag. <laughs> That's so uh, true because it's so big, isn't it? So like everything yeah. just goes into that one. <laughs> but yeah, we, we did have many comments on that. We we're like, oh, Bailey have done it again. You know, <laughs> they know how to get them in. Um, so yeah, you said that your college sort of has a reputation of being left wing and things like that. Um, so why do you think it has a reputation and what have you sort of experienced in college that sort of lives up to that reputation? Um, I, th I think it's just a historical thing. I think lots of students, you know, it just perpetuates itself. Students go there because it's left wing, it's left wing because students go there. Um, I, more than anything, there might be some like noticeable his like, historical alum alum alumni that, um, you know, help that case. But at the same time, there's lots that don't, um, as, as is true with any Oxford college. But when you get there, it does, it does ring true. I, I'd say more than other colleges. I think you know, the general vibe you get if people are quite a lot more receptive to left-wing views, which is not entirely the case. And, you know, people, that isn't everyone at top by, by any means. And people like to have conversations about stuff. Um, we do have a left caucus, which is slightly active, like political society. Um, they occasionally go to protests or like campaigns, um, like to, you know, 
think like talk about things sometimes um it's a nice thing to get involved with if you want occasionally do like a bar night or something um, that's really cool mm -hmm. um, um i suppose does that come with rivalries because i know i've heard that there's like a slight like jokey historical rivalry between Balliol and trinity yeah um i'm not sure if the political aspect aspect feeds into that too much but okay we do yeah occasionally people like to play on the Bailey or trinity rivalry um in fact last term somehow we managed to managed to get their cat to secede to Bailey uh, we had their cat artemis walking around our college like for <laughs> the whole term <laughs> which was quite fun um but yeah it's always like it's never a serious thing but if you meet someone from trinity while you're out and about at, you know event or a night out or at the pub you know it's it's funny to say something like in jest yeah no that's really good cool. i think college rivalries are really really fun um yeah and i like i know peters has a rivalry with like teddy hall and keyball and they have like a chant that they shout at the end of um their box like like joking jokingly attacking the other um colleges so yeah it's really good fun yeah and i think there's some there's some ancient story about how i think like a trinity heretic was like burnt on the doors of Balliol, and i'm not sure how true that story is at all but i think it's something that was like told to me in one of my open days no way! I think all of this sort of adds to like the Oxford Cambridge character and like fun. Like I think it's like a really cool thing to you know to be involved in. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I guess like you've got like that that sort of reputation. Um, and I guess that it's like you you want the college to be accepting for all people, no matter what their views are, even if they are like known to be more left wing. Um, for more information on Oxbridge colleges, subjects, and to get help with the application process, visit oxbridgeformula.co.uk. Click subscribe and ring the notification icon to be notified when we release new content. So how do you think um, equality and diversity is within college? Um, I'd say it, it depends on what you're talking about. Um, we, so in, t in terms of like LGBTQ stuff, it's really great. I know that firsthand, um, it's really welcoming and there's lots of LGBTQ people here. Um, in terms of class, I'd say it was really open to people from different class backgrounds, etc. And I'd say in general, like people are very open to um, people from different race backgrounds. But as is a problem with a lot of Oxford, we struggle um, to get people from certain ethnic minority backgrounds, particularly black backgrounds. Um, and we do have black students, and you know they they make a great part of the community, and you know everyone loves them, um, and they're completely welcome. Um, and you know there are, there are issues with racism everywhere and that's particularly coming out at the moment um, but I, everyone you know we're all but we're all making a huge conscious effort to fight those things as well and there's been a lot of important conversations happening recently especially around Bailey um, within our JCRs and stuff in passing motions and college has also been really receptive to that um, our JCR passed a motion with a lot of demands to you know in light of the Black Lives Matter protests, um, you know, things they wanted to see happen within college, how they could better support their black students and provide better welfare for them. And that was, that was taken to the top college meeting and they accepted everything that the JCI brought forward. So it was a huge, you know, positive piece of news for, you know, the Bailey black community in general, I think. Yeah, that's really good. And it also shows that like, Bale is trying to like encourage Bale students to apply to Oxford and, and it's so nice that once they're there it is like a really nice welcoming community but yeah the problem is just trying to like encourage Bale students to apply it's yeah it is like a really underrepresented group um that we like but it's good to know that Bailey will know that and are you know putting in yeah the and hopefully there'll be lots of positive things that come from this as well yeah yeah definitely um and that'll be exciting to see i guess and like you said like the lgbtq plus community is like great in Balliol. what sort of events do they have um so i mean so occasionally so every tuesday in in the university is the 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 student night out at the gay club um so and there's usually like a drinks event that happens like around the university and people from all the colleges go um, but in Bale it's quite nice, usually someone will have like a priest before that and then we'll all meet up and have some drinks in that person's room and then we'll head over to the university drinks site and then to the gay club plush, um, so that's quite fun. So you know you've got like quite a nice group to go out with and you know you can only know maybe one or two people in Bailey but if you come to the Bailey like priest and then you get, to, you get to know everyone and then everyone looks out for each other on a night out which is quite nice. Um, there's also like in stuff that isn't to do with drinking um etc etc like there was occasionally some like 
movie nights like we've shown a few lgbtq movies and documentaries which has been nice um with like paris is burning we did um oh, there was uh, i can't remember some, something that was on netflix um but yeah those have been quite nice and like little like welfare teas but like lgbtq specific ones and there was also a crew date i think a couple of terms ago um i couldn't make it unfortunately but oh. that was really really fun i think it was with like Anne's and maybe brazen maybe brazen's or trinity um but like yeah a crew date for maybe someone that doesn't know is where different colleges or different sports teams or different societies etc um you know get together in a restaurant and you kind of maybe sit like like alternate alternating with the college or the team so you get to know other people um and you bring your own drink and there's all these different like games and traditions that you do um but it's, it's quite focused around drinking and getting to know people from the other college or team um, yeah yeah that's really nice that you guys do that and it's so nice that like there's a nice closeness within college but also between colleges because like i'm like i love how active the lgbtq plus community is and how like tight-knit they all are because especially in my college somerville like honestly they're always together like they got on so well it's such like a tight-knit community and they've got yeah, each other somerville have a great <laughs> a great reputation for um the queer community yeah <laughs> I, yeah yeah, exactly. It's just it's just so like a nice environment to be in, and yeah. I'm glad you've had like a similar experience like at Bailey. Yeah, and it's so it's such a great way to meet people from outside of college as well because you know obviously everyone has lots of mates from their own college, but occasionally you just want to escape the walls, especially because Bailey's quite small. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice to just like escape and you know like fling, like you know bounce ideas off someone that isn't at Bailey. It becomes a bit of an echo chamber sometimes, um, and it's so <laughs> easy to meet friends from there. And I've met some of my best mates from outside of college. Oh, that's really really nice to hear and it's great that like the lgbtq plus community is like really well represented at um, oxford and yeah it's just really great really great to hear. um and i suppose welfare is really, really important in general for everybody and do you think the welfare provisions at bailey all are like good um yeah um in general yeah we've got a team of peer supporters which like i think every college does um that are quite dedicated to what they do they go through quite a lot of training um, and that they're so their student peer supporters. Um, there's also like a welfare team on our JCR, and then different welfare officers that support um, like the, the different groups that might want different types of welfare, um, which is common amongst most colleges. And you know they're always really approachable and stuff. Um, you know they also and they undergo some training as well. I think. Um, then in, yeah, in terms of other things, we the main point of contact in college is our chaplain slash reverend i'm not sure what the right word is but bruce um bruce is like this big character in bailey or um he's known for his vegan flapjacks that he brings to any and every event um you just you just need to suggest the idea of flapjacks and he'll come with two trays um, <laughs> that's great so yeah this is the bailey both welfare involves a lot of vegan flapjacks um from this made by bruce and they're, they're really beautiful as well and <laughs> they're amazing um but yeah he's he's always got his door open um um so do you want to chat and he's a trained like psychologist or psychiatrist the, whatever the right one is he's that <laughs> um so he he's a great person to talk to and then also from like more university wide perspective there's the counseling service and they, we have a specific um counselor that comes into bailey all once a week as well that comes from the counseling service um, i think he's called cam so you can make appointments with him as well if you want someone that maybe isn't part of the college and that doesn't know all the you know the senior staff at college um and you, you know just air your, your issues with it, which is quite nice that's really really good and when i initially asked you if the welfare provisions were good you were sort of like yeah in general is there anything that like you'd like to see improved um i'm not sure um not not for, not for me in general like i've not had that many issues um i guess um it's, it's hard it's hard to know i guess i don't like if i i think i was just thinking about the question a lot <laughs> on many yeah that's fair i was just just wondering if like there's just anything you wanted to flag up but yeah that's it's great that like you've had no trouble with the welfare provisions and that it is like sufficient yeah i think actually i think one thing that like a couple of students maybe get worried about sometimes is um and bruce is an amazing person does does his job well but like he's always he's also the person that's in charge of if you're struggling for money maybe you want like to take out a loan with college or ask for you know like a some money to help you know with your rent or to buy food like if you're in that sort of situation bruce is also the person to go to and 
um, you know, having that dividing line sometimes is maybe useful. Um, so I think, you know, a few students would, would prefer it wasn't that way, but at the same time, it gives him a, a different, a unique insight into students' lives. Um, so yeah, I think some people aren't so happy about that, which is maybe a negative. Um, but Bruce is also very good, very committed to his job. Um, and he's been great whenever I've spoken to him. That's good. I mean, yeah, I guess like some people would want that divide and that's like, you know, that's their opinion, you know, and, um, but I'm glad that welfare on the whole is really good and there are people there to help. And even like him being there to help people with money, is there a lot of support for people with money troubles? Yeah, I definitely had quite a few mates that, you know, have run out of money or have, needed to stay in Oxford over the vacations for academic or for welfare reasons, maybe something that's good at home. Um, and I, almost all the stories I've heard, all, all the stories I've heard um, have been very positive in that, in that regard. Um, you, know, you know, even if they just need another 50 quid to get through the last, last two weeks of term meeting, you know, generally they'll, I've just seen, heard a few times where college has just given it to the student because, you know, they don't want their students starving at the end of the day. Um, and your know, welfare rooms are quite good. You know, if for some reason it's, it's hard for you to live in your house, maybe you know some, so there's been an incident, you need to move back into college, or it's really hard for you out there. You know, they're really um, accommodating with yeah, welfare accommodation um, as well. It's one thing I've seen quite a lot of. Oh, that's really, really good. I'm glad that, yeah, I didn't even think of that because we never have to live out at Somerville. So I didn't even think about people having problems in their houses and, you know, what would happen then. So that's really great that Balliol has that in place and has welfare rooms for those who need it. That's really, really good. And I guess um, important, an important thing is accommodation in general. So how does accommodation work in Balliol and what's it like? Yeah, so it was a little bit different when I started in the, we have our accommodation guarantee. So, well, this is, you know, based off the, the general roadmap of a three year degree, um, a bit different when you're four. Um, but I think you had two guaranteed years in college, which are generally your first and your third year. Um, if you've got a four year degree, you maybe want to swap out for your fourth year, it's up to you. Um, and then in the other years, you would choose to live out in a house, usually probably in Cowley, which is the more student area of Oxford. So it's maybe like a 20 minute walk to the southeast of Oxford. Um, and it's like a bit more of a lively community, a bit more like it's not that much of an old city anymore. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on there, which is quite a fun place to live. That's where I lived in my second year. Um, but recently Balliol's, um, al I think almost finished building now, slash finished building some of the um, more like an extension to our uh, college annex called Jowett Walk. So we have a college annex called Jowett Walk, which people can also apply to. But we've also had uh, an, 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 what's, what we've called the Masters Field Project going for the last few years, um, which has just been to extend those. And that, the goal of that is that every undergraduate student shouldn't have to live out if they don't want to. So you, you have now, any, any student that applies from now on, slash applied last year, uh, has all the years of accommodation guaranteed, either in college or in Jowett Walk, um, which is quite nice because obviously college is right in the centre, the centre is important to you, and then Jowett Walk's five minutes away as well, so it's really close, it's not that bad being in Jowett, and the flats at Jowett Walk are so nice as well, they're all brand new modern flats and they've got these like huge like bay windows um, looking out onto like our sports fields, um, really, really pretty. And like brand new kitchens and facilities because they're all built recently as well. That's really, really cool. And is that um, the rooms allocated via a ballot system? How does that work? Yeah, so in first year you, you have like a, a price preference, so high, medium or low, is you select that and then you get allocated a room that is suitable to you. Then in second, whenever you are choosing a room in ballot, in Jawa or in college, um, you, it's then balloted. So College, if you apply for college, you, we get a random order of people and you pick in that order. Um, I was quite high up, I was like number 19 in my, in my third year, so I, I had quite a lucky spot. Um, but in Jawa, generally you'll get a group because the Jawa, the Jawa rooms are in flats of like six or eight. Um, so you'll get a group of six or eight people together, or less, and then they'll meld two groups together. Um, and then you'll get assigned a flat, um, and then you get to pick your rooms within your little group. Um, and, but then, yeah, the other thing with Jowett as well is that you can choose a long or a short lease. Um, so in college and in Jowett, you can, ch you can choose to stay for just the eight weeks of term, maybe plus a week at the beginning or end. Um, but at Jowett, you can also choose to have the holidays um, as well. So you can choose to stay there for holidays and have an extended lease. 
Um, and a lot of people like that because they like to get work done in the holidays or maybe they just don't fancy living at home as a 21 year old anymore. Um, you know, everyone has their reasons. Um, but yeah, that's the good thing that's great about Jawa. The other thing about Jawa as well, which is quite unique to Bailey, is we have our own Michael Pilch studio there. Um, I don't know if you've yeah. heard of it. Yeah, my friend um, did a play there um, in Michaelmas. Yeah, yeah, it's so really cool. Cool. yeah, so we're quite drama centered at Bailey as well, it seems. Um, it's not something I got involved with, but a lot of people like to be involved with it. Um, so we have like, a, I think it's called like a black box studio. I'm not sure. Um, but like, yeah, you, you can, if you can picture play, a lot of people like to get involved in plays at Oxford. And it's just, it's just another place that you can do your play, I guess. Um, but the, it's run entirely by the students of Bailey which is quite a big theme at Bailey as well. Like a lot of things are run by students. Um, and the, but the, the Pilch is run by students so there's like a manager and there's, it's got its marketing team and it's like other officers and it's like a whole committee um, and they have to sort through all the different pitches from the different plays and decide which ones get to go on. That's really really cool and like you said a lot of the societies at Balliol is like student run and things. I read, I was reading like, um, it's the student read so I don't know how like accurate it'll be but I was reading that like sometimes this means that things can go a bit wrong or like if um, societies can be quite short of money what's your experience of that? Yeah so I think I, we never hear about financial issues from the pill so that's generally self-sustainable I think um, I don't think it has too many like sunk costs um, but we the other things that are mainly student run are our JCR Pantry, which is our cafe that we have in our JCR, so our common room. Um, and that's entirely student run. We employ some staff for breakfast. I think we're closing down breakfast now because it wasn't profitable, profitable enough. I guess that answers your question a little bit. Um, but there's also like lunches and dinners provided. And it's a great way to work for college as well if you like want to work or if you even want some experience like in managing a cafe and you can you know get involved with that and then the other thing is the bar um so that's like just underneath the jcr like in the basement that's a really cool place and that's all student run as well um in terms of the finances it's it's up and down it depends entirely how popular they are because it seems like from term to term year to year the bar and the pantry can you know go through large like you know differences in how popular it is um i think very recently in t like in terms of two terms ago um we were very short of money and it was looking like the bar and the, the bar and the pantry are going to go bankrupt if we don't do something. <laughs> and, it, and, it's, and it's weird because when you go in there, it doesn't seem like there's no one there a lot of the time, but I guess something might just be like, you know, um, bias in that you want to go when people are there. Um, so it's only busy when you're there. But um, yeah, I think this term has been a bit like, uh, very helpful because um, no one's been there. We've all been at home, studying at home. So the JCR has saved a lot of money from, you know, not spending it on its usual things. Like we often often do like welfare teas and stuff, and they must have yeah. saved, you know, lots and lots of money from that. They've not had to put the lights on. They've not had to, you know, buy any of the beers or the food that goes mouldy. Um, so I think <laughs> our finances are in um, a bit of a better situation now, and I think the the bar and the pantry are going to be open next year, thankfully. <laughs> um, but there was a point where it was looking quite dire. I think. Oh no, well, at least like hopefully after this time it'll be okay with a bit of spare cash. Um, I definitely want to talk more about the pantry and bar, it sounds really cool. Um, so like what sort of things are served in the pantry? Um, so I think we're getting rid of breakfast but there was like a set you know, like English breakfast menu and then others like cereals, porridges, like muffins and stuff. Um, at lunch, um, it's really sort of like a choose your own adventure. Um, <laughs> you will kind of make whatever you ask them to. No way! Um, so they do, but the general sort of like structure is there's toasties, there's um, paninis, there's um, wraps, jacket potatoes, like some pasties or sausage rolls maybe, um, and then sort of like some like fruit and then some, you know, shelf stable things. Um, but then, and then like a million different toppings that you can choose from. Um, so my, my general order is um, generally like a vegan cheese toasty with maybe some like tomatoes in it, but uh, which is quite nice. Uh, and it's great because they do like a nice easy vegan meal as well, which is great for me. Um, but yeah, and then at dinner, um, it gets a bit more, it gets a bit more, um, you know, unregulated. Um, in the, so it's, it's always a different student that's making the dinner every night and it's just the student gets to pick what is made. Um, 
So if I, I mean, my, I worked in pantry a few times and did dinner. I think we did a chili once. We did, um, oh God, we did, oh, I'm trying to remember. I can't, I can't remember now. I've worked in <laughs> We definitely did a chili once. Um, but I remember some people get like this reputation around Balliol for being like these like master chefs. Um, and then like it, it almost becomes like a cult night to go to their pantry night and then they sell out and have like lines queuing up the JCR. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and like people, people like say, "Oh, what do you want to do for dinner tonight?" And it's like, "Oh, so and so is in Paris tonight, so I'm definitely going." Um, <laughs> and they get to say huge reputation, but some some students are really good cooks and they deserve it. Um, so yeah, some students have like a weekly slot where they do dinner every Monday, maybe, and you know, then they have this cult following on Mondays. Or I remember there was sometimes like a Taco Tuesday, and there was tacos every Tuesday, but. You know, it it, dep- it changes every year as well because it, we have a different person running it every year and it's sort of their vision. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit hectic more than anything. <laughs> but it's, not, it's usually like nine times out of ten really good food <laughs> and quite cheap as well. well. I literally I literally can't go over that this happens in your college. Like I've never heard of this before and it sounds so cool. And the fact that it's the students like making the toasties and like making the meals for people, it's literally insane. It's so cool. No, it's great. Um, and it, it, as I said, it's great if you want to make a bit of extra money as well. Like it's, it's, it's such an easy job. You don't need any skills. They're, they're happy for anyone to work there. You just need like half an hour of training um, and you know, you're set to go. Um, it's, it's, it's great. And it's a great way to make friends as well. Like when you're stood behind the counter and they're waiting for their toasty to be ready and you've got the five minutes while the toast is in the, oh, yeah. in the press, um, you know, ask them how's your work going and stuff. Yeah, it's it's really it's a really nice place, and the bar's very similar as well because it's exactly the same vibe really um, in terms of how it's run. Um, That's so, really and, cool. And the bar shifts get really competitive as well. Um, as well, people get you know there's always like a an email sent out being like if you want to train to do the bar next term, you know we've got so many slots, like maybe like eight slots. Um, so oh no, maybe sixteen. Um, and then so if you, this first come first serve. Or something so that and then the, and then there's another email five minutes later like slots are filled <laughs> every single time like it, they're really really popular um i think it's seen as quite cool to work in the bar as well <laughs> yeah i feel like it's the cool people's kind of thing to do yeah. yeah your bar is also like a really cool place to be at when i did like a bar crawl around a few colleges like baylor's bar is like buzzing but it was when i went there anyway and there's like people playing games and it was like quite full music playing like is that quite representative of the bar yeah, on a busy night, definitely. We have some very quiet nights and very busy nights, but okay. on the busy nights, it's, it's really good fun. Um, it's, you know, it's quite dingy. It feels like a student bar, which yeah. is <laughs> um, It's got a jukebox, you know, you can put 20p in, choose one of your favorite songs, uh, so that's quite fun. And then if it gets really busy, people generally start dancing in the middle. We've got like a table football um, and a pool table as well, which people like. Um, yeah, I'm, I think that's one, that's one of my mum's favorite places to go. I took her, took her down to the bar a few times. Oh, but, so but when we've got our signature drink as well, called the Bailey or Blue. Um, have you had one? No, I actually haven't. But I saw, I saw it up like when I went there. What's in it? Yeah, I think it's like like a blue VK or WKD with like some added vodka, lemonade maybe. It's it's not too complicated. Um, <laughs> They all get you drunk quite fast. In fact, and I took my granddad down there once with my mum, and he had to be carried out after a bl- after barely a blue. <laughs> Just one. No, he'd been drinking before that. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> but, he was, but he was taking the mick out of me because he was drinking like a proper pint, and I was on a barely <laughs> <old> blue. <laughs> he was like, "Oh, what's the drinking?" Um, and, he had, and, he, and he downed it in front of me, and then we had to carry him out fifteen minutes later. <laughs> How much are they? Maybe like three pounds. Oh, it's not bad. No, it's not bad. Um, and in general, it's quite cheap as well. I think your pints are generally around two pounds in there. It's quite good. Yeah, that's uh, so good. Just barely have it. Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> I was going to say, on Tuesdays as well, it gets extra cheap. Um, Tuesdays is known as Crazy Tuesdays in Bailey Um And there's a long tradition going back of having very crazy Tuesdays. Um, because we used to have, well, we used to have um, like a big like tradition of everyone going to the bar on a Tuesday, then going to this club afterwards called Fever, which is directly across the road. Um, yeah. And that doesn't happen so much anymore. But crazy Tuesday, Tuesday stuff thing, and you can get shots for less than a pound and really cheap pints. And so if you're on a cheap Tuesday night out in Oxford, that's a really play, nice place to go. 
And then we'd also like hijack that like for the gay night out sometimes as well. So that's also on the Tuesday. So, I was going to say, yeah, that'd be perfect. Okay. Plush. Yeah, occasionally we'd all meet in the bar and have some cheap shots or something. That's so cool. Your bar sounds so cool and the pantry sounds so cool. I'm literally so jealous. <laughs> Because our um, at Somerville, we have like a cafe and bar all in one, and like it doesn't really change from a cafe vibe to a bar vibe at night. It's just a little bit like a bit dead. <laughs> so yours sounds way cooler. And what's normal day to day food like in the um, halls? You've got like pantry and then hall. Yeah, there's hall as well. Um, so hall does um, lunch and dinner. I think they're, they're thinking about doing breakfast, taking that over from pantry at the moment. Okay. Um, but yeah, hot, hot lunch, there's and, and dinner. There's always like three options, I think. Um, at least one of them is vegan. Should, you know, at least one of them is veggie. There's usually two veggie options, and most days there's a vegan option. Um, and that they're becoming increasingly receptive to vegan options. Like it's become a lot more common over the last year, and that's due to a lot of the hard work of our like environment and ethics officers. Um, really they had a lot of meetings with the college and got them to agree to doing a trial and then the trial was really successful and now we have lots of vegan and vegetarian foods there um which is quite nice to see um and yeah the the, the the standard in general is quite good i'd say like it's always a nice meal it's not somewhere i eat a lot um i'd say i eat there more like when i was helping out with open days and stuff because you get to eat there for free so i was eating there for free every day <laughs> and it was it was very very nice um but i say in general like i'm not generally in college around lunchtime so i I'm generally like in the maths department or the stats department, so um, I'm never eating lunch. And if I was to eat lunch, I'd probably go to pantry instead. Um, and then dinner, I think hall's a bit early for me to dinner because I do it at six thirty, and I like to be a bit later than that. But. Okay, nice. So, have you had many vegan meals there? Like, um, what's your opinion of the vegan meals at hall? Yeah. No, it's really yeah, it's really really good. Um, okay. um I think, yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot better than I could make <laughs> at any stretch. Um, and they, it's quite diverse as well, quite varied. Like, there's a lot of dishes that you wouldn't generally try. Um, like and what? Then, oof, like, I don't know, like Middle Eastern food or like Chinese dishes I never would have tried or like Ooh. Indian food, um, Italian food. Like, they, they really travel the world with their foods. Um, <laughs> That's really cool. Like, yeah. Um, but never anything like... Always something that I'm willing to try as well, which is quite nice. Well, that's really, really good. And like, I don't think many colleges do have like a vegan option very regularly. So I think like that's really, really good from Baylor that they like try as much as they can to have a vegan option. Because like, considering veganism is becoming such a huge thing, like it is important to start implementing it and bringing it into canteens and things. So that's yeah, really, really cool. It's so popular among the students as well, so it just makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And then I suppose like. Um, some people may want to cook for themselves. So are the kitchen facilities like good enough for people to do that? Um, the short answer is Balliol is not known for its kitchen facilities. Okay, they, cool. The kitchen facilities are not amazing, but they're getting better. Um, there was maybe a, like a handful of kitchens, like I'd say like in my second, in my third year just now, like I wasn't, I didn't have a kitchen on my staircase. Like I had to, you know, go, go a few staircases adjacent to, go and then even then there wasn't an oven there was just like a like a little like desktop hob and a microwave like there wasn't even a kettle it was it was quite abysmal um but there are a few good kitchens in college but obviously when you've got the whole college trying to use them there's generally someone in there um, unless you like to eat at weird times and you're fine um but yeah it's not great for its kitchen facilities but we have just had a new one installed um like quite a big one which is quite nice and then I think that they're, they're talking about installing another one as well um, that's quite good yeah but I, it still won't be a lot like okay. a, a, considering the number of students but I, we do have a lot of options as I said and it's quite cheap to be in pantry or hall and I, I mean I, I find myself just buying stuff from Tesco a lot of the time and eating something that's ready to eat from Tesco because that's across the road yeah, I suppose that's a really good point to make is that you probably just don't need kitchens because you are literally like a two second walk from Tesco. I mean, there's loads of um, like little cafes on um, Broad Street where Bailey Isle is and then you've got the pantry and hall. So, yeah. yeah. And obviously that can add up a bit. So if you do want to like eat in the street, shop for money, like, you know, you can you can find a toast to make these on toast for a week. Like, I've been there as well. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it, it's definitely doable. Like I never struggle. It's like I think I just got into the habit because everyone else is in the same habit of, not cooking for themselves that much um, yeah. we just got into doing that um 
and by say what well, I think one thing was that was quite nice is in my second year when I did move out and went into living in Cowley, like everyone got really into cooking then. It was it was suddenly cool to cook and everyone did cook and we come around and have dinner parties. We had quite a nice like dining table like in in our house as well, which is nice. So you're, like you're actually becoming an adult rather than just like <laughs> like yeah eating all whole food, which is literally what I do because I'm so lazy and cannot cook to save my life. So, but yeah, it's nice that like you can if you live out and um, cook yourself. Yeah, and it's really convenient actually having the hall and the pantry there because you know if you've got like a big long stressful day and you don't have time to cook for yourself, like you can just get a cheap meal from the hall. You know, just turn up with your tray, fifteen minutes in and out, and you're done. Like you don't yeah. have to come back straight back to your recipe or your problem sheet. Yeah, that's so true. It's so important for convenience, especially Oxford and Cambridge, where the workload is like significantly larger than other universities. So yeah, um, and then formal halls, I guess, is like another thing that. Um, is very famous in Oxford and Cambridge. So what are formal halls like at um, Bale? Um, I can't say I've gone to a lot. It's not really my thing. Um, yeah, fair. But I've been to a few, like, I've been to like a few specific like society ones or something. Um, they're, 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 they're all right. They're, it's just like a regular hall, but everyone dresses up. We don't have to wear gowns at Bailey Hall, which is something that appeals to me, I guess. Um, oh, yeah. Um, but a lot, a lot of colleges have to wear gowns for formal meals. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's generally like a nice, like three course weighted meal with wine. Um, like the food gets quite a bit posher in general. Like there's generally something I've never heard of. Like they really like go out for their Michelin star. Like, I think one of our chefs who's like used to work in Mr. Star restaurant or his restaurant got Michelin star. Um, oh that's my God. That they like to say. And it feels like it when you eat the food because there's always like at least three ingredients you've never heard of. <laughs> I'm trying to guess which one is which, like reading the menu. Um, I love that game. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah a lot of wine as well like they they love to just come over your shoulder and pour you more wine without even realizing um so oh, wow, they, they give you the wine you don't have to bring your own yeah yeah but that's included in like the meal price as well how much is it um i think it, it depends on which society because it's subsidized or not i think okay. in general it's like 15 to 16 pounds um for a formal meal and that includes all your health call that's like a three course meal so that's pretty good. Like it's yeah. it's much better than like anywhere you go for a restaurant. Like and and you get to dine in this like massive beautiful hall. Bale has a great hall as well. A really nice hall. In fact, I, I was once told again. Not, I don't know how true it is, but um, I think I was once told by someone on an open day that um, Bale was a, was the one. It was a college that was originally approached to film Harry Potter in, like for their great hall. But then we turned them down for some reason, and then they went to Christchurch. No, so. that's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's really pretty in there. Um, oh, yeah, I can imagine it being stunning if they nearly chose it for Harry Potter. So, well, if they nearly you know, used it. Yeah, and then and then you sort of like quickly descend into Bailey or Bar, which gets a bit like it's a bit <laughs> more grotty. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a lot. It's like people tend to care less as well. We've had we had like a couple of maths formals, which uh, were quite nice. And then the, sometimes the tutors come into the bar with you afterwards, and you know you've got to be on your best behaviour. Oh yeah. Um, with you. And they generally leave after one drink, but it's it's nice to see them and have a chat with them. Yeah, definitely, and it just makes them feel a bit more human, like not just like scary tutors that are like way above you you know so yeah i think it's really cute that baby all does that that's mm -hmm. really, really nice um and then what else is there there's, there's i mean there's, oh yeah i guess bops is also like a big like um college thing so what's that like in baby all? yeah um they're really good i was actually the answerer in my first year um for a while so i was the one that organized all the bops like the college parties um I, what's quite great about Bailey Hall is that we can have them on site. Like some colleges can't have them on site, some colleges can. Um, so we can have ours on site. We we clear out all of our JCR, our common room, and the bar is that's directly underneath. So we kind of like spills out into two areas, and you've got quite a busy bar area, and then the kind of main dance floor, which is the JCR, um, and then we sell like almost ridiculously cheap um, bobtails, is what we call them. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of some like danger juice every time. You never quite know what's in it. You've got to sort of trust that um, it's safe to drink. It usually doesn't smell it. Um, I'll taste it. Um, you know, it's, it's some kind of lemonade and spirit concoction. But it, and it's, it's always some sort of like fluorescent blue or green colour somehow. Oh, yes. I, don't know. I don't know quite whether you've put, put in, in them recently. But uh, <laughs> no, they're really fun. Um, and almost like the, the most the most active part is like the bit outside and like the outside smoking area a bit um and yeah i think we've, we've I mean, in recent years we've had a reputation for our bops um, and like lots of people have 
try to come in and people try to invite their friends and stuff and yes yeah, they're really fun um one of my favorite parts is you can get bot sets um so some colleges like just like have one student dj or something but you can get like a bot set which is 30 minutes where you can put your own music on and you decide what everyone's dancing to um so me and my friends have done quite a few of those um, it's quite fun because you there's like a little raised platform stage area in our jcr yeah and a table on top of that where the, all the djing happens i guess um and you can like stand up there um while you're playing your music and generally you and your mates are the ones that are, like on the table dancing above everyone else um and i'm not sure it's um past like health and safety expectations like i'm not sure who did the risk assessment for that <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it does it's not very safe i think the table fell down once actually and it, <laughs> Like, we were quite lucky no one got injured. My God, yeah. <laughs> Which is one of my bops as well. <laughs> I tried to ban it after that, but no one would listen to it. <laughs> oh my God, that sounds so cool. And does that mean that there's like quite a range of music in the bops then? Because like, obviously not everyone's going to play like Taylor Swift cheese. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, everything from sort of like drum and bass to Taylor Swift, really. <laughs> um, and you kind of, you kind of, you kind of realise, because they announce who's doing the bop sets in advance and you think, and kind of what the title of the bop set is. So you kind of know in advance what times you want to be in the dance floor, what times you want to be in the bar, maybe getting your drinks, and what times you want to be outside chatting to people. Um, so you can kind of plan your night in advance. Um, but, there's, well, but then we always, for the last bop set, it's always kind of like something that's like universally like enjoyed. So everyone for the last half an hour, it starts convening on the JCR, it gets packed. Then for the last song, we always sing Angels by Robbie Williams. Oh yeah, what, what a song. Yeah, which is a which is a tradition in a few colleges apparently, um, but it's this magical moment, and you know, you'll never quite know what it's like until you've been to one, where everyone is like everyone just like gets like like arms around each other like swaying because everyone's like quite drunk, <laughs> um, just like belting out Angel by Robbie Williams at the top of their voice, and it doesn't matter who's next to you whether you know them or not, like you've got your arm around them and you're singing Angel. <laughs> yeah. Such a vibe. Uh, and people are on the shoulders and screaming. Oh, it's it's so fun. If, if you enjoy a drinking kind of thing, um, it's so so fun. Yeah, that honestly made our bop sound really really fun. And I love that you've got like like set out like what's going to be on each time. Like say a proper proper organised event. You know, it's, yeah. that's really really cool. Um, and then balls are obviously like another massive event. Have you attended the Bailey Ball since you've been at uni? I haven't. No. Um, I, uh, most people do in general. Most people have a lot of fun going, but yeah. uh, I think it was a lot of money, and I was just like, I don't think I would enjoy it that much. I think I'd rather spend that money on something else. Yeah, um, that's very fair. But I think in general, Bailey was one of the cheapest balls, which is quite nice. Um, I think it, generally about a hundred pounds for a ticket, which that's sounds like a lot of money. But that's in terms of prices of Oxford slash Cambridge balls, like it's really quite cheap. Yeah. Um, and in general, college were quite good with students that, you know, couldn't necessarily afford it or were struggling to, you know, get that, um, you know, subsidising a ticket or like buying a ticket for them um, on a, like, a mean tested basis. Um, so I think anyone that wanted to go to the ball, like, was able to go in the end. Like, I don't think that was a problem at all. Um, I just didn't think it was for me. I'm not, not a big fan of, like, getting in my suit and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, that's so far. I mean, at least it shows that like you don't have to go to a ball and like you're not missing out loads if you don't. Um, and there are people who don't want to go. But yeah, also yeah. like the options there if you do want to. And one thing that's quite unique about Balliol is we alternate between having a ball and a garden party every year. Oh, sick. But, yeah, so we were meant to have a garden party this year. Unfortunately, it got cancelled because of coronavirus. Mm. But, um, next year we'll have a ball. Um, but the garden party is quite fun. I went to the garden party once. Um, which is like quite a lot cheaper. I think it was like forty pounds for a ticket, okay. um, and then all your all your booze is provided, all your food, and they get some really good food food trucks in. Like we had like um, like hot dogs and burgers, like but including vegan ones as well. Lots of vegan options as well as usual. Um, there was like like churros as well, which were vegan, so it was great for me. Um, I can't remember what else. There's so many other things, and it was just unlimited. Like you just kept going up and going going back to them. I think I must have gone like three or four times for food. I like really filled my boots um, and then so you like go around and they've got like pims and jugs and you just help yourself and like wine and beers and I can't remember what the theme was but it was like just like huge, huge like hay bales like stacked around the quad um, and there was a performance area as well which had like loads of bands playing um, and everyone was like, dancing it was almost like, like a mini glass and room thing <laughs> yeah, it was so okay. cool. <laughs> that's um, so cool that's such like, yeah, a nice but, idea as well yeah, I think so too, because it, you know, it kind of like, it's, it's a bit, something a bit different, um, 
and it's a lot cheaper as well. And it sets it sets Balio apart, and it's quite popular with the alumni as well. Like quite a few alumni like to come back and to the Balio Garden party. That's really nice that like you've got that um, like community and those events that you can go to after you finish Balio too. Because I suppose if you had a ball every year, alumni aren't going to keep going to them. But like a garden party, I guess is like a bit more chilled out. Um, and like quite a nice thing to come back to. Yeah, and I think especially like for the year or two after you go to uni, like a ball or a garden party is a good excuse to come back and catch up with your mates um, and yeah. the year below you or something. Yeah, I think it's like a really, really nice idea. But I think it's also important to highlight that as fun as Bay on and Oxford has sounded so far, um, that obviously there is a lot of work too. And I suppose like people do spend a lot of time in the library. So I think the library is like a really important facility um, in a college. So what's the Bay Law library like? Yeah, it's quite nice. It's it's quite pretty. It's kind of set, like sections into a few different rooms. Um, there's an old library and a new library, which were very creatively named, I'm guessing, because of their <laughs> ages. Um, and the law library, again, creatively named because it houses the law books. Um, and yeah, and the it's re it's really pretty. Like in the old library, you've got these like you got like desks in between the shelves and like these little like cubby holes. You get to work here and they're really pretty. And you can, you kind of have like a window right in front of you, you're looking out onto the quad, uh, like this through the stained glass window, it's so pretty. And then in the new library, that's kind of where the librarians live and we've got like an archives bit underneath. Um, and the librarians are so, so great at Balliol, it's something I'd like to, you know, really outline because they're, they're just so helpful with anything you want. And, you know, they're really good at finding books for you or like buying books if you, they don't have it. Um, but in general, like all the books you'll ever need are in the Bailey Library um, and they're very committed to, you know, getting you books if you need them. Um, they put on all sorts of events as well. They put like historic collection showings as well. So every term there's usually, they, and they take requests from students, like if there's like a particular thing from our historic collections or like any old books that Bailey has that you want them to get out. Um, and then they'll put on like a showing every term and you can go around, like put gloves on and like have a look at it. Um, and, you know, it's, I guess it's more interesting for students that are into like the history or like classics or something like that. But um, like, I know people really enjoy those. Um, and as always, as well, something that's really nice that librarians do is every week they do a tea and biscuits um, in the oh. library. Um, so it's like it's like Thursday around two p.m. And, it's, and they're like, and they go around. And it's like, oh, like everyone's stressed. Just come in the other room. We're having tea and biscuits now. And it's like half an hour, and they just make squash and tea and biscuits and. Um, and you just get chatting to everyone for half an hour and have a nice little brain break. Um, and they're ask, they ask you like how you how your studies are going and if, if you need any help in the library. They're so great. That sounds so nice, honestly. I, like once again, I haven't heard of that in another college too. It just sounds like really all such like a nice like environment to learn in and to have fun in. It just sounds like a really nice place to be. No, completely, yeah. Yeah, that's really really good. Um, and do you have any like college traditions? So I know like um, there's some weird traditions in Oxford, like different colleges have like Merton, they walk right backwards around their quad on the day that the hours go, the clock goes back or forward. So like maintain this space time continuum, like in that hour that's like lost or gained or something. Is there anything, is there, is there anything like weird just um, Bailey or traditions? Um, I'm trying to think. I think the, the angels after the bop is quite a big Bailey or thing. Yeah. Um, Nothing, nothing is um, springing to mind immediately. Um, yeah. No, you might have no, to get that one. Yeah, no, sorry, because I mean, same for some of our, like, if anybody asked me that question, I'd be like, I don't think so, but yeah, I can't think. Yeah, so that's very, very fair. Um, and is there an on-site gym in Balliol? Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, I can't, I can't um, claim that I know exactly what it looks like. <laughs> I'm not exactly a gym goer, but um, <laughs> yeah, there is. It's, it's next to the bar, actually, um, like underground, underneath the JCR. And I think it's it's used a lot by the rowers, by the rowing team. Okay, yeah. and so there's quite a lot of like rowing machines, but also like assorted other gym gear, like weights and stuff. I guess um, I, it's not. It's not. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's from, from the impression I get. It's not like a huge state of the art. I've got every piece of equipment in the in the universe ever, but. Uh, like it does the job for most people and it's really cheap to join I think it's like you just pay like a five ten pounds like fee at the beginning of the year and you've got it all year oh wow yeah. that's really, really good in terms of gym, like if you can deal with the basics then that's more than enough um, but then as well you can join the university gym which which is one of the huge ones that has everything or even a private gym there's several private gyms as well 
Yeah, because I mean, Balliol is so central that like, it is so close to all the gyms in town as well. And I guess on that note, like the centrality of the college, um, a tour is a problem. Um, not really, not in not in my experience. Um, like we we get some, we get like probably more than average, but okay, they're, they're not. They, they never bother me too much. I mean, it's quite nice. Like sometimes they come and ask you a question, like, "Oh my god, I'm talking to an Oxford student." <laughs> <laughs> like I'm not that special, really. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it, we get we get some, I guess. Um, I think people stumble into Bailey a lot because we're on like Broad Street and one of the main streets um, but we're not actually that huge inside so sometimes I feel a bit guilty because they they come in and pay their two pounds to come in and there's only like two quads um, and like, compared to some colleges have like four huge ranging quads and gardens like going on for like acres so we don't have that <laughs> like right in the centre and we're quite compact um, but we're, so we still got our like a fair share of pretty things to see. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think it's kind of nice to have tourists walk around, like, obviously not too many, but like, I, I you know, like a few, because it sort of like reminds you where you are and like, like stops you from taking things for granted. Whereas like in Somerville, well, we obviously don't get tourists, I don't think we get any at all. So like, I just, you know, think about going about my day, like I don't even think, wow, I'm in Oxford and like, I'm so lucky to be here because like, it just becomes so normal. But I think it's like a constant reminder for you guys. Yeah, we have a lot of tourists outside, actually, on, on the main street, on Broad Street. Um, it's, it's quite a bit of a tourist hub. I think a lot get drawn in because there's a food shop across the road that gives out free fudge. So I think, we get oh, a lot, yeah. <laughs> I think lots of tourists get drawn in by the food shop and then Bailey's across the road and think, oh, let's go in there. <laughs> um, and, it's quite, and you know, I've definitely pretended to be a tourist a few times to get free fudge. <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, that's a great thing about Bailey. <laughs> yeah, that's actually such a shout. So I'm feeling a bit low. Blood, low blood sugar just run across and like all to free fudge yeah they definitely um so which college do you think is the most different to Balliol um it's hard to, it's hard to say I think there's, there's a few things um uh, in terms of how central it is like there's a few that are really quite far out you can go to LMH or St Hughes or St Hilda's they're quite far out yeah um, in terms of maybe like the politics of the student body maybe Christchurch is quite different from Balliol um and then and then in terms of the size, Baylor's quite small, compact. Um, there's some colleges that are huge, like Worcester's quite huge, yeah. Christchurch is huge, um, John's is huge. Um, you know, so there's, a, there's a few things um, that you can measure it off, I guess. But I think all colleges are more similar than they are different, really. Like, and every, they all have their weird little intricacies and stuff. But um, at the end of the day, you, it's, it's an all pretty building surrounded by students. And that's kind of like the, big, the biggest similarity. Exactly. And people always seem to end up like loving where they um, end up in college. Like you put like diehard fans at your college. So yeah, I've yeah. never heard of anyone that stayed at their college. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think it's like really good to just let people know that because picking a college can be so scary, but it really is not a big deal because you will mm. love where you end up. Um, and then I guess like a final question for you is that if you didn't apply to Balliol, which college would you apply to? Oh, good question. Um, maybe Worcester is so pretty over there. Wow, and it's got like, so nice. like lake or a river or something. Yeah. Fancy buildings. It's so nice in Worcester. Um, or maybe maybe Wadham. Wadham's also really great. Um, and you know they've got quite a nice community there, from what I can tell. Um, or John's. John's has a lot of money. Yeah, has a <laughs> lot. Apparently, of money. it's it's quite easy to be a John student. Um, financially. Um, yeah, probably some some one of those. But I'm. But if I was to apply again, I'd definitely apply to Balliol. Like it was one hundred percent the right decision for me. That's really good, and that's such like a nice way to sum it up. You know, like overall, Balliol is the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for talking to me today. It's been so so interesting, and like it's been such a great insight into Balliol and it's literally nothing that I thought it was I thought because it was in the centre of town and things that it was quite uh, like conservative and like really posh and traditional so like it's been really eye-opening to see the real Balliol no well I'm glad I could open your eyes yeah <laughs> that was really good thank you so much for being here today and yeah good luck with the rest of your degree me. yes yeah, no don't worry see you. thank you thank you see you soon bye bye, -bye.